So today uh, we will continue the definition of a stable model and start new handout uh, which is about programming with Klingo. So uh, the second PDF file, the lecture note, is also uh, posted on the blackboard. Uh, these two are kind of companions, so um, you might actually read the um, uh, second file which is called pwc.pdf first and then you can read uh, sm.pdf. Uh, but I think it's better to look, uh, understand the theory first and then try to uh, go with the implementation. So some of the material may be repeated. I'm, I'm going to minimize those overlap, uh, but the lecture note have uh, certain overlaps there. Okay. So um, this is what we saw last time. Okay. So um, we ha we define the notion of stable model in uh, three steps. The first step is to find out certain critical part of a formula, which is basically the part that starts with negation. Okay, and we form the reduct uh, relative to the interpretation that you are given. So uh, basically the reduct is uh, the transformation from the original program by replacing those critical parts with either top or bottom, depending on whether uh, those parts are uh, true or false under the interpretation. Now you formed another um, uh, program. Now with the new program, then you d you see that there is no negation. Okay, so then it goes uh, similar to the positive program that you saw. It's actually basically the positive pro pro uh, program that you get as a reduct, and then apply the previous definition that applied for the positive program. So what is the stable model of po uh, positive program? Just minimal models. Okay, so. Uh, the third step is to find the minimal model of the reader. And if that minimal model happens to be the same as the one that you started with when you formed the uh, reader, then you call that um, uh, interpretation to be a stable model. Okay? All right. So let's do some more practice uh, today. So uh, we are going to find all uh, stable models of this program. Now, stable models are basically models with certain uh, additional conditions. Uh, maybe you can call it stability. So it is a model in classical logic, but it has to test uh, those notions of stability. And so when you talk about stable model, we need to also uh, think about what is actually the signature that we are looking at. Okay. Because when you define models in proposition logic and class, uh, uh, first of the logic, we started with the signature, okay? And the signature determines how many interpretations that you can have, right? If you have a signature to be PQR, how many interpretations are there? Eight. If you have PQRS, how many interpretations do you have? 16. Now, if you look at this uh, positive uh, this uh, program, uh, this uh, formula, um, what is the signature? PQR. Well, the signature should at least contain PQR, but it may contain other symbols as well, right? So writing the formula, you, you don't have to use all symbols in the signature for each formula, okay? So you can say the underlying signature could be also PQRS or PQRST or whatever. Okay, as long as those signature contains PQR, then that could be understood as underlying signature. On the other hand, we don't need to care too much about the symbols that do not occur in the program. Can you guess why? Okay, hold that question. Maybe once we practice this, uh, maybe that will come again and you may get some more understanding. For now, uh, let's assume that the signature is only PQR, okay, for simplicity. So then we have eight interpretations to try, right? So for this program, it has PQR. So the naive way is, of course, you can generate, uh, generate all these um, eight possibilities. Mm, 
So there are eight uh, possible interpretations. How do we check that each of them is a stable model or not? I'm going through these three steps, right? Okay, so let's try that. Actually, can we be a bit? No, let's try to be naive. Yes. <laughs> okay, so let's look at uh, uh, I1 or I0, let's call it I0, which is empty set. What is the reduct? So let's call this one pi. Okay, and let's call this is I0, I1, up to maybe I7. Okay, so what is pi superscript I? Zero. What is the reduct of this program relative to I0? So P or Q, the first rule is copied as is because it does not have any critical part. So you don't have anything to replace. So for all these uh, redux that you are going to see, uh, it will contain always uh, P or Q. Okay, good. What about the next one? So what is the critical part here? Not P, because that starts with negation. So here, critical part is actually very simple. Okay, just the formula that starts with negation. Okay, so um, so there are only two choices: whether to replace not P with top or bottom, depending on whether not P is actually satisfied by the empty set. So does empty set satisfy not P? Yes, yes you should <laughs> be used to that by now, right? Empty set means P is false. Q is false and R is false. All atoms are false, right? So then uh, P is false, so negation of P is true. So we replace it with top. Okay? So the second step is done. We form the reduct. Now the third step is to check whether the empty set is a minimal model of this reduct. Don't look at the original program anymore because that's gone, right? So is I0 a minimal model of the reduct? So here you can uh, do multiple ways, OK? So uh, one thing to do is, uh, first, you can check whether I0 satisfies this reduct. If it does not satisfy, you don't even need to care about whether this is minimal, right? So does I0 satisfy the reduct? Why not? Why, why doesn't this satisfy? Because P or Q to be true, at least one of them, P or Q, should be true. But empty set says none of them is true. So P or Q is not true. So I0 is not a model of the reduct. Hence, the conclusion is I0 is not a stable model of this program. OK? So let me repeat. So it's basically just procedure. You form the reduct and check whether the x that you started with for each of these case, whether that x or i is a minimal model of the reduct. If that condition is true, then we call that i is a stable model of the original program. OK? That's the definition in the previous slide. OK, so what we say, see here is I0 is not a stable model. OK? Are we together? OK. So what about the next one? So let me actually write here, pi I1. Again, the first one is actually the same, right? P or Q doesn't have any uh, critical parts, so nothing to be replaced. Now what about the second one? R if bottom. Why? Because now I1 is P. P is true. So now P is false. So now P is replaced by bottom. OK? Now what is the next step? We have to check whether this one is a minimal model of the reduct, not the original one. OK? Be careful. So is I1 a minimal model of this uh, reduct? In order to check, first you have to see whether I1 satisfy this reduct. Does I1 satisfy each of these rules? Yes. yes. Right? Because P or Q is true, because P is true here, right? 
And this second rule is now tautology. Bottom implies anything is actually true, so it's always satisfied. Okay? So then I1 is a model of this, but is it really minimal? So now suppose you take out P out of I1, which is now empty set, which is smaller than I1. Does empty set satisfy this reduct? Empty set does not satisfy the reduct because it does not satisfy the first rule. So I1 is not only a model, but it's also a minimal model. Okay? So I1 is a stable model. So this is stable model. Okay? Are we together? Okay, so this is a good time for you to practice on the quiz. Okay? Okay, so what, what about the next one? So let's write pi i2 here. So this is i2. What is the reduct? P or Q? R if top. It's actually the same as i0 because P is false in i2, right? So it's actually the same as the uh, case of I0. So the reduct in this case is actually the same as the reduct with respect to I0. Okay? But we are looking at I2. Does I2 satisfy the reduct? Now we are re looking at the reduct relative to I2. Right? Don't look at the other reduct. Don't look at the original problem. Only look at the reduct relative to I2, which is P or Q and R if top. Does this interpretation satisfy this reduct? No. no. Why? Because second the second rule says R must be true, but this one, this interpretation does not have R to be true. Okay? Hence, I2 is not a minimal model, because it's not even a model. Hence, I2 is not a stable model. Okay? Yes? Can you say one more time why the negation of P is tau? The I2 case? Yes. So um, in I2, we look at, so the, 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 all we are doing at this moment is to see whether this will be replaced by top or bottom. And that condition depends on which interpretation that you are applying. So sometimes it may be true, sometimes it may be false. In the case of I2, we are applying this interpretation, where Q is true, but P and R are false. So P is false on the I2, which means this is false. Then not P is true. So then we replace with top. Okay. Yeah? Okay. All right. So then um, let's do the next one. Uh, pi I3. Okay. Um, should I actually do this? Can we be a bit smart? Can I3 be a stable model or not? No. 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 Why? First. Because I3, whatever the reduct is, right? I3 must satisfy P or Q. But I3 cannot because it doesn't have P and Q to be true. Right? So we don't even need to look at the second rule's reduct because each of the rules must be true for this interpretation and I3 does not satisfy the first rule anyhow. So it cannot be a model of any reduct. So this is not. Okay? What about I4? No. Okay. So I4 is basically you just need to look at the uh, interpretation, whether it interpretation contains P or not, right? Because all we, met, uh, all we care is actually not P. To determine the truth value of not P, we only need to know whether the interpretation has P or not, okay? So there are actually just only two uh, cases that you will see. Uh, let's actually look at pi i3. So this inter, I'm sorry, we are looking at pi i4, right? So pi i4. So this one contains P, right? Then the reduct is actually the same as what we did for, say, I1, because I1 contained P, right? So the reduct here is P or Q uh, if bottom, because, or if you don't want to look at the other uh, cases, just look at 
the fact that I4 contains P, so that not P is false. So not P is replaced by bottom. Okay? Now does it, uh, actually this is now different from the previous case. So I4, does it satisfy the redux relative to I4? Yes. yes. Because PQ is true, so the first rule is true, and second rule is also true. Is it a minimum? No. no. Well, there's a smaller one than PQ that satisfy this redux. Just P or just Q. Okay? Because there are actually two smaller models than I4 that satisfy the redux. Of course, you don't have to generate all sm uh, smaller ones. At least there is one smaller one that completes that I4 is a minimal model. Okay? Um, why Q. Q does not satisfy the result? Yeah. Can somebody explain? I, mean, I, I, I understand that. I just said Q doesn't satisfy. A singleton said Q. Does it satisfy the result or not? Mm -hmm. so it, does it. it does satisfy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so we are looking at um, this program with respect to this one, right? Okay, the question now is um, does Q satisfy this reduct? This reduct. Of course, Q is true. So the first one is true. Q or Q is true if Q is, uh, Q is an interpretation, right? Okay? And second one is also tautology. So even if you take uh, a singleton set Q, it also satisfies. Okay? So there are actually two counterexamples to the claim that I4 is a minimal model. It could be because of the presence of the singleton set P, or it could be uh, the presence of singleton set Q. Okay? Yeah? yeah since we knew that P is already a stable model, uh -huh. do you need to go and check for P? Yes, we do. Yes. I mean, uh, probably here you were, you were asking for all stable models, not for all minimum models. Well, well, I think that's the question is I understand. If, if P is already true, can PQ be a stable model? Because kind of some reason, right? That's an actually interesting question. We will probably get into that in a moment. OK? Um, but my short answer for now is not necessarily. His argument is this. We already found that P is a stable model. How can be another interpretation which is larger than P can be a stable model? Because you were mentioning we are finding the minimum models. So he said like we can stop after the uh, first P. Yes, and I said that's wrong. P is a minimum. Okay, we will get back to that kind of problem in a moment. Okay, but let's, uh, I guess, for now, let's just uh, practice the current mm -hmm. definition, okay? All right, uh, so PQ is not a stable model, okay? What about QR? What is the redux? Does this becomes now I5, right? So yeah, this one does not contain Q, uh, P, so it's same as I0, so pi I5, is actually same as pi i0, which is p or q, r if true. Okay. Does pi phi satisfy this regard? Huh? Yes. Yes. Is i phi minimum among those models? So what is a smaller than i phi that satisfies this regard? Somebody says there's a smaller one that satisfies this one, right? So, what is it? Recent? Or no? Somebody, I heard somebody was saying, no, this is not minimal. Okay, means that you have some other model that is smaller than QR, but satisfy the same redux. So I'm asking, what is that 
model to look at. Uh, how many smaller model, uh, interpretations are there? Only three, so <laughs> let's try. So, so I5 obviously satisfies this reader, P or Q and R in half, but uh, what about Q? If I take, say, um, uh, Q, so if you compare Q and QR, Q is smaller than QR, right? Does Q satisfy this reduct? No. no. no why not? Because the second rule now say R must be true. Oh, so that must not be a good idea. So forget it. What about R then? R is still smaller than QR. Does R now satisfy the reduct? No. No, why not? So the first rule. Okay, so, and of course, empty set obviously does not satisfy too. You will see that. Uh, QR is the smallest set of atoms that satisfy the reader. You cannot take it out any interpretate, uh, any uh, atoms from I5 and still satisfy the reader relative to I5. Are we together? Okay. Whew. Two case left. Okay, so what about I6? What is pi I6? It's M is pi 1, I1, uh, so P or Q, R if bottom. Does PR satisfy this reduct? Yes. yes. Is it minimal? No. no. Which one is smaller than I6 but still satisfies the reduct relative to, relative to I6? P. P. Okay. Fine. Right. So this is not a stable model, and I believe this was a stable model. This is not a stable model. So we found so far two stable models, um, and the last one is actually not a stable model. I will leave this as an exercise. Okay. All right. Uh, question. Okay. Good. So then now let's look at something interesting which uh, get back to Arindam's question. Uh, so P is not P, okay? So let's just assume that the signature contains only one symbol P, okay? Uh, in fact, actually, let me go, go through this. Now once we have done this exercise, if you see any uh, interpretation, so suppose I change the signature to be PQRS, okay? Then what you will see is, if I take something like P, Q, S, okay, let's say maybe this is I10, and ask you to check whether this is a stable model, what is your impression? <laughs> this is never a stable model. Why? Because it contains S. I know this might be a bit um, tricky, but think about this way. When you form the reduct, you only remove some part of the pro replace some part of the program with bottom or top. Okay? So you don't actually introduce new atoms when you form the reduct. Right? So when I see that I is 10 PQS, whether to check this is a stable model or not. I can immediately say that this cannot be a stable model because it contains S, which is not even in the program. Okay? So suppose, okay, if, okay, so this might be a bit too much for now, but uh, let me just say anyhow, okay, because we have to solve the next problem. Okay? Um, it is, so the theorem is like this. It is actually okay to look at the signature that comes from the formulas. You don't even need to, con you don't need, need to consider those atoms that is not even in the program because those interpretations can never be a stable model. For instance, PQS okay, contains new atom S which is not in the original program. Now what would happen? So suppose PQS is a stable model. Then there's a contradiction. Can you see where the contradiction comes? You can find if PQS is a stable model, which means that the, um, 
Okay, so let's actually have a small proof. Okay, assume PQS is a same model or pi. That means PQS is a minimal model of pi PQS. However, this program does not contain S. So you will actually see that, in fact, PQ is also a model of PQS. Hence, you can always find a smaller set than PQS that satisfies the rhythm. So there's a contradiction. Now, obviously, this is not a general statement that I'm saying, but the uh, uh, proof of the general statement is actually the same kind. You just need to make it a bit more general notation. Okay. In fact, this theorem can be further refined. And that will, I will leave as a formal problem later. Okay. All right, but uh, let's still go back to the, uh, the definition, okay? So uh, I, I'm, I probably jumped too much in the previous slide because somebody asked, but let's just uh, look at uh, the uh, definition. So here, um, it, so what, what I just said was it is okay to consider only the atoms in the program. So I will only consider the signature to be P because here, all these uh, examples, uh, P is the only uh, symbol, right? Okay, so let's call this as a pi, and we will check whether empty set is a stable model. Okay, what is the readout? P if tau, because P is false, so now P is true, right? You, sh you should be familiar with this thing, okay? Um, now, empty set, does it satisfy the readout? No, so what do you conclude? This is not a stable model. Okay. Now, what about pi uh, p? What is the reader? It's opposite, right? So now it becomes bottom. Does p satisfy the program? Yes. yes. Is it a minimal? No. no. What is smaller one? Empty set. Empty set satisfy the same reader, right? Because this rule is actually tautology. So even the empty set can satisfy this program. So. For this example, you see that there is no stable model. Okay? Question? Okay. The next one. Let's call this again pi. Pi empty set. Hmm? What is the critical part now? There are actually two negations. So we have to look at the outermost one, right? So what is the critical part? No, no, no. Not, not p, right? So. Does uh, empty set satisfy this critical part, not, not P? No. Now, P is actually the same as equivalent to P, right? So empty set does not satisfy P. So what should we do? P if bottom. Good. Uh, are we together? How many of you don't follow the reader? Okay, good. Uh, let me re repeat. So, uh, we are just doing this uh, slide. Okay, so just exercising on <coughs> this slide. Okay, so the first part to know is uh, we have to find a sub formula such that it is the kind of largest negated formula. Okay, are, are we clear about this? Okay, so then let me not go into this. For this example, there were two critical parts, which is this one and this one. This is the largest uh, negated formula. Okay, so that part is okay. The next part is we have to replace each of the uh, critical part with either bottom or top, and that is actually explained here. Okay, so. When you form this uh, so-called reduct, we are given two objects, which is pi, a propositional program, and x, which is an interpretation. 
So using this object, we are creating a new uh, program called the Redux of pi relative to that x. Okay. So how do you obtain this? You just copy the original program, but replace each critical part with bottom or top. Actually, I think it was type one. So this one is actually the top. Okay. If uh, interpretation x satisfy this critical part, replace with top. Otherwise, uh, replace with bottom. Okay. Are we together here? Okay. Just replace the negated formula, top or bottom. Okay. Depending on the condition whether uh, uh, the interpretation x that you started with uh, satisfy that part or not. Okay, and then the next is uh, we call X is a stable model of original program if X is a minimal model of the reader. Okay, so we are exercising on this definition. Okay, so going back to this one. Okay, let's actually uh, resume uh, this case. Yes. So on the first one, the P implies not P. Mm -hmm. P is not P, so it's actually not P implies P. Right, not P implies P. Okay. Um, so when P is, uh, so I thought on one of those, the input, I thought implication only has uh, false if true implies false, right? Uh, implication is true when the antecedent is false right. or the consequent is true. So in the case of uh, what's called in the case of the P, so set P, right? So P is true. Um, does mm -hmm. it become so implies true? Yeah. That is tautology. Right. Right. So doesn't that satisfy the set? So let uh, so this is the redux, right? Are we together on this part? Okay. Now we have to see whether the last case, uh, last condition is whether P is a minimal model of this reduct. If this is true, then we call P a stable model. Okay, so we are checking this condition. Right? So, what do we mean by minimal model of the reduct? Okay, there are, it consists of two parts. One is this P, singleton set P, must satisfy this reduct. Okay. And it is actually the case because bottom implies P is always true, no matter what interpretation that you apply. We call it such a formula as Okay, which means not only the single sunset P, also the empty set satisfies the same readout. Right? So what we are seeing is this is a model, but it's not necessarily minimal because empty set also satisfy P if bottom. Right? Right, but the empty set doesn't satisfy the rule. Right. Empty set satisfy the reduct, right? I mean, I, I agree empty set would satisfy P implies bottom. Right. And that's it. That's the definition. You only need to check whether the empty set, or the, I think I the P is a minimal model of the reduct. But, what you find just now is that this is actually another uh, model of the Rita, which is smaller than P. So the claim that singleton set P is a minimal model of the Rita is false. Okay? So this claim, we are checking the claim, whether this is true or false. And this is false. The counterexample is empty set. Empty set also satisfy the readout. So we cannot call this model to be the minimal model. Okay? But, all right, sorry, but so in this case, the model is, or the rule for the model is P implies not P. Empty set is satisfied, P implies not P. Okay, you should read as bottom implies P, not P implies P. Okay, it's bottom. Bottom implies P. Right, that an empty set doesn't satisfy the right? That empty was the first set part. satisfies the bottom implies P. Okay? So, 
Uh, okay, let me just uh, do this. So why empty set satisfy this? This is actually true. Right. Oh, you agree got, on this. Well, we got there from setting P as the primary rule, right? So I don't understand uh, the part that you're asking. Can we just go back to their definition, maybe? Yeah, we can do. But let me, let's just uh, resolve this first. So which part is your question? Why don't we go on the last guy? Okay, good. Okay. So this is the definition. Somebody want to see that again? Okay, all right. So then uh, let's go to this one. Okay, so we are uh, back to uh, P if not uh, P. The reduct of pi relative to empty set is P if bottom. So that's empty set, the minimal model of the reduct? Yes. Yes. So what do you say? Empty set is stable. a stable model. Good. All right. So what about uh, the next case? So this is opposite. So this should be P if True. top. top. Okay. Is P a minimal model of this reduct? Yes. 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 <laughs> okay, it is because it's basically saying top implies p, which is equivalent to p, right? So p is the minimum model. If this is minimum model of the redux, hence p is also a, mini a stable model of the original program, right? Now this actually illustrates the point uh, where you found some um, two stable model, but one stable model can be a proper subset of another stable model. It happens. Okay? Empty set is contained in the set singleton set P, but both of them are stable models in this case. Okay? All right. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, so, in this, uh, the first one, where we rejected P with P. So we assume that P is true. Then only we uh, came to the formula that P hit, uh, hit bottom. You're asking about the second case? No, no, first, huh, second. Yeah. First one, uh, the second. So P is bottom, right? Yes. Yes. So, no, we said P, uh, P is true. P did a <coughs> P is true, then now P is false. Correct. Yeah. So that is replaced by bottom. Yes, so that part uh, understood. So uh, in that case, P is a, st a stable model. So uh, how now we are seeing with the no, no, no. empty You're talking P about, OK, let's make it clear. You're talking about this case, right? Yes, yes. yes. And the conclusion was this P is not a minimal model. Yes. So, so this is not a stable model. Yeah, so, so the question So which part is the question? Yeah, so the question is, if we reduce that uh, pi rate of, uh, the data formula, right. assuming that P is true. Right. Okay, so now we are saying that empty set uh, is a uh, stable model. So that means no, empty set, set is not a stable model. A we didn't model. say that. Like empty set is a minimal model. Because we are saying that... We only care. Okay, I, I think we should, we should be clear about the definition. So the definition was very clear about what to be checked. So I guess some people are still confused here. This is the line that you have to pay attention now. We are calling x is a stable model of pi if x is a minimum model of the reader. Okay? So this is all we check. If empty set satisfies this reader, doesn't mean that empty set is a stable model. No, we just not. say that x is not a stable model. That's what definition implies. Okay? Clear? Okay, good. All right, so yeah, I think I, it was good to prepare all these exercises because it's just one slide and I could just jump to the next topic, but it looks like many questions are rising here. Okay, um, so <laughs> we are done with the second case. Um, now the third one. Okay, so what is pi empty set? P or top. Which is actually equivalent to what? Top. P or top is top, right? So now one line, <laughs> just show you, showing you, right? We have to check whether empty set is a minimal model of this reduct. True or false? Yes. True. So we conclude that this is a stable model. 
pi p. So this must be p or bottom, which is equivalent to p. Okay. So that's this p. Mean, so we are checking this claim. Just don't think about other things. So whether this p singleton set p is a minimal model of the reduct, which is yes. yes. So then, is this a stable model? Okay, this is uh, similar to the second uh, formula, right? So both empty set and p singleton set p are stable models. Um, we'll come back to this uh, later when we do the Klingo program. It turns out that this formula, P or not, is a very interesting formula. Okay, very interesting. So we'll actually give a name later. Okay. And maybe for... Uh, Maybe I will just uh, skip next slide and we'll come back here. So one question that might arise is, is about this just one line definition. X is a stable model of pi if X is a minimal model of pi relative to X. Why bother with this readout? Why do we have this critical part and then replace and check minimality? Okay, so here's a claim. Well, let's try to simplify this definition. For any program pi, x is a stable model of pi, if and only if x is just a minimal model of pi. So basically, just forget about the readout. Let's just say minimal model. OK? Is this claim true? No. x is a stable model of pi, if and only if x is a minimal model of pi. No. If this claim is true, then what we spend for 30 minutes is actually just a waste of time, right? False. Then, what is a counterexample? P or not P. P or not P. So what was the stable model of P or not P? Empty. There were two, empty set and the singleton set P. Okay, so for uh, pi, which was P or not P, okay, stable models are empty set, and singleton set P. What is the minimal model? There's only one minimal model, which is empty set. Okay. So, um, in fact, this claim could be true if you apply to positive program. Okay. But if you start with the negation, then this is no longer true. And believe it or not, uh, this. Uh, uh, took a, lot, a long time to be resolved in the literature. Okay, so people uh, in AI spent maybe 20 years to argue that what is actually the best definition of negation as failure. Okay, and this is probably one of, I, I would say this is the best. Um, somebody, I know there's another group of people who might disagree, but I think this is the best definition that we have now. Okay, um, then let's get to this one. So um, here's this thing that you can also observe. So the two programs may be equivalent, but their stable models may be different. Okay? So these are the examples. Um, so if you look at P if not Q, Let's actually look at the second one first. So P or not P, and Q or not Q. Are they equivalent? Which means, do they have the same models? <coughs> do they have same models? P or not P, and Q or not Q. Do they have same models? Similar. No, there's no such thing as yeah. So P and Q, they have different names. So then your signature should contain at least P and Q. That's the assumption uh, underlying. Okay? 
So, because the fact that you can write P over not P and also you can write Q over not Q means that your signature contains at least P and Q. Okay? So, let me help you. Okay? Which is not exactly uh, enough, but let's just say sigma is P over not P and Q over not Q. Are they, do they have the same models? No. It's true or false? Do they have the same models? False. False. <coughs> so, what are the models of one formula but not the other one? P. P? So P satisfy what? P satisfy this one. And you're saying that P does not satisfy the second one? <laughs> We're talking about models, satisfaction, proportion logic that is a long time ago. Maybe when you're in the kindergarten. This is a tautology, Q and not P and Q and not Q. It's a tautology. Either this candy or not. Okay? You always have the fact to be true. You get the candy or not. There's no other case. Right? So these two formulas are actually equivalent because they are tautologies. All the models, all the interpretations satisfy them. Okay, maybe after you study some more complex concept like stable model, you forget about the basic concept of tautology. P or not P is always true, right? No matter what interpretation that you apply. Okay, but now we know that the stable models are different, right? What are the stable models of this? You remember in the previous slide? So the stable models of this is empty set and P. Likewise, stable models of Q or not Q is empty set or Q and Q. So they actually have different sets of stable models. Okay? All right, let's look at the first one. Um, forget about stable models for now. Go to the very simple case of uh, propositional logic. P if not Q, Q if not P, P or Q. Are they equivalent? Yes? Then what are their models? They have the same model. So the models of this formula is P, Q, or PQ. If you don't know how to verify this, um, you can draw the truth table and check them. Or you can do some equivalent transformation. Not P, and not Q implies P is actually the same as not not Q or P, which is the same as Q or P. So they're actually only equivalent. Okay? Um, however, the stable models are actually different. Um, I'm going to actually show you that in the later slide, or maybe not. Okay, let's actually do. Can you guess what is the stable models? Of, actually, let, we already know something here. Okay, what is stable model of P or Q? So that was singleton set P, singleton set Q, because they are positive program. There is no negation, so it's actually very simple. Okay. So this is stable model. Okay. What about P if not Q? What is the stable model here? P? P? Okay, let's check it. So let's call it pi 1. So let's actually write scratch here. Pi 1 relative to, okay, pi 1 relative to P. What is the reduct? P if top. Okay, if you're not familiar with this transformation, you probably have to go through this exercise again. So, singleton set P means that P is true, but Q is false, then not Q is true. Okay, so that's why this is replaced by top. Okay? Okay, so that, then does P, is P a minimal model of the reduct? Yes. 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 So, P is a stable model. Correct. Let's try Q. What is the stable model of pi 1 relative, uh, what is the reduct of pi 1 relative to singleton set Q? P if bottom, right? So 
Is Q, single sunset Q, a minimal model of the redux? No, no. No. So that claim is false. So this is not a stable model. And you can try the other two cases if you are in doubt, but they will turn out to be not stable models. So here, only P is a stable model. And this is actually symmetric, so you will get only Q, single sunset Q, as the stable model. Now you see that these are actually propositionally equivalent to each other. Okay? So they're equivalent on the propositional logic if you just draw the truth table. But if you find, if you compute stable models, they are different. Okay, so let's do another exercise. We just saw that the stable models of this program is P and Q. So it looks like this is exclusive or. You don't have P and Q both to be true, right? On the other hand, um, now let's actually look at this one. So what are the stable models of this program? <laughs> hmm? P, okay, so it does not have any negation. There's no critical part. So all you need to check is whether this is a minimum model. Is P a minimum model? Yes. Yes. Okay. What, what about Q? What happened to Q? No. Q now. What about PQ? Yes. Is PQ a minimum model? No, we already checked that P is a model. So PQ is not a minimum model. Okay. So. Suddenly, we add this one line, and we get only one uh, of them to be the same model. OK, that's not too surprising. What about this guy? P or Q? Q if P, P if Q. So the stable model must be P, Q. This must be the minimal model of the redux. Okay. Now, there's something unpleasant here. Well, maybe not unpleasant, but maybe a bit strange. So, let's actually compare this with um, classical logic. So, uh, let's look at the models of P or Q. What are the models of P or Q? So here, this is a stable model, but let's just say models. What, is mo what are the models of P or Q? PQ and PQ. <laughs> so there are three models, right? Um, now let's look at actually the last one. What are the models? The last, last one, this. What are the models of this? PQ, right? There's only one model. Now between the first one and the uh, third one, so the, the third, uh, first program and uh, third program, what we added was two more rules. Now in classical logic, what happens is each of the rules works like a constraint. You have to satisfy additional conditions. So you start with some uh, many models. When, when you are asked to satisfy more and more formulas, then the set of models actually decreases because you now have to uh, satisfy additional formulas. So um, when you have more formulas to satisfy, then the number of solutions actually go down. Okay? And not only the number, but it's always the case that you don't actually introduce new uh, models when you add more formulas. You only get rid of some models of the original formula, which does not satisfy the new rule. However, you don't int uh, introduce new models when you add new formulas. But here is something interesting. In the stable model semantics, what you see is there was a P and Q. Now, when you add two more rules like this, you get a totally different stable model. 
which is not even a stable model of the original program, P or Q. So by adding some new rules, you actually create a new models, new stable models, which are not a stable model of original program. Why this is interesting? This is so called the difference between monotonic logic and non-monotonic logic. Okay, so here is the definition. Uh, the logics that you saw before, propositional logic and first order logic, and most uh, of those kind of logic is actually called monotonic logic. So here's one definition of monotonic logic. So if x satisfies uh, f and g, then x satisfies f. This is one way to state the monotonicity. If x satisfies both f and g, x will all, uh, also satisfy only one of the formulas. This is always true, right? Because you actually get rid of more, um, get rid of the um, restriction. So the previous model is still a model when you have, when you get rid of this uh, uh, g part. Okay. Um, this condition can be equivalently rewritten as so-called contraposition, which means that if x is not a model of f, x cannot be a model of f and g. These two statements, the first uh, bullet and the second bullet, are actually the same thing. If you study logic, you will see that p implies q is same as not q implies not p. So this is actually the same kind. Uh, well, if you don't know about that, that's OK. Uh, just saying that if x was not a model of f, and when you add more condition g there, then x cannot be a model of f and g because x does not satisfy f. So it does not satisfy conjunction with any other formula. Right? So this is what we know as monotonic logic. Another way to say this thing, the set of models of f and g is a subset of the set of models of f. What that implies is this. If we know that x is a model of f, okay, we can find if x is a model of f and g by only checking whether x is a model of g. So in other words, uh, one idea is, uh, let's think about f as a knowledge base that is already there. And you already know what are the models of knowledge base. And now somebody adds more formulas to the knowledge base. Okay? How do you compute the models of the new knowledge base? According to this monotonicity property, all you need to do is assuming that you already know that x is a model of the original knowledge base, you only need to check whether x satisfies the added conditions. If that is the case, then x is a model of the knowledge base. You don't need to recompute the big knowledge base again. Okay. On the other hand, stable model semantics is actually non-monotonic. What you see in the previous slide is if you find a stable model of f and g, it is not necessarily a stable model of f. So here uh, the example was p or q and two more rules, p is q, q is p. The stable models of f and g was z p q. However, that set is not a stable model of P or Q. So this is actually in contrast to, uh, with the left uh, case. So even if X is not a stable model of F, it may be a stable model of F and G, unlike in monotonic logic. And also we can say in the same, uh, the same thing here, to just say in another way, we cannot say the set of stable models of f and g is necessarily a subset of the set of stable models of f. That's also not the case. Which means, even if you know that x is a stable model of f, and also you know that x is a stable model of g, you cannot compose f and g. You cannot say that x is a still a stable model of f and g. Okay? 
Now what happens here is this. So we are actually trying to deviate a bit from the classical logic. Why do we need this non-monotonicity? Remember the old example that like getting to the airport, okay? So what if somebody says that now um, the car is not drivable or the airport has moved, okay? I did, did we talk about that example, right? So somebody can give a new condition and then it defeats the previous conclusion. Okay? Because there is certain condition, certain statement, and there's an exception to that condition. Now, in monotonic logic, what happens is this. Um, one of the exercises, homework exercise that we did was, if the knowledge base is inconsistent, you can derive anything. Okay? So if there's a contradiction, then uh, that knowledge base can entail any formula. On the other hand, what we often, often observe in um, knowledge representation is some knowledge is more like the usual assumption, default. And some uh, uh, other knowledge is actually exceptions to that default. When you add exception, then you can revise your knowledge base. You can still derive meaningful conclusion from this knowledge base. Okay? And that's where actually the same model semantics uh, can be useful. And for now, actually, this is just a mathematical definition. And when we do the programming uh, next, uh, it will be more clear. Huh? Okay. Okay. So this is just a one slide that might be actually <coughs> right. So a lot of definitions here. This is actually only one definition: uh, monotony uh, logic versus non-monotonic logic. So monotonic logic simply means it satisfies this condition all the time. And the other bullets are just a rephrasement of the rephrase of the uh, this condition. While in non-monotonic, basically, even if x is a stable model of f and g, you cannot claim anything about whether x is a stable model of f. Okay? So that's the definition. Okay. So okay, let's get to the now the uh, we are done with the uh, sm.pdf. Now we are going to pwc program with Klingo. Okay, so we'll just uh, uh, illustrate some part here. Okay. So let me go through this. Okay. So here is a Klingo program, okay, to find, uh, say, prime numbers. Okay. So can you read this formula now? Okay. So what is this one? It's a composite n, where n goes from 1 to 5. So n is a kind of variable that ranges over the numbers from 1 to 5. Okay? And i is another variable that ranges from 2 to n minus 1. And n, when uh, the remainder of n divided by i is 0. So n is divided by i. Okay? So then we call n a composite number. And prime numbers are simply the opposite. It's a number from 2 to 5, and it's not a composite. OK, so let's see how this is done. In order to understand this program, you need to do mentally turn this into propositional image. That's what we practiced, to be, uh, practiced before. So uh, let's see what happens. So n goes from 1 to 5. Okay? So let's say uh, n equals 1. What is the value of i? When n equals 1, what is the value of i? Empty. Which means that this, set, this rule is not effective. So forget about that case. So when n equals 1, it does not produce a proportional image. OK? When n equals 2, what is the value of i? i? No, no, no. Still, 2 to 1 is empty. Right? So it's still not. Now, are, are we together? We're doing uh, incre increase this value, 2. So we still cannot find the i because i goes from 2 to 1. What about when n equals 3? What could be the possible i? So now n minus 1 is 2. So i could be 2. 
Okay, so we found one i here. Now what is n divided by i? And this is not the remainder, right? So remainder is 1, so it's not equal to 0. So again, this does not make a proportional image. Okay? Now let's go with n equals 4. Then i can be 2 and 3. Right? So when n equals 4 and i equals 2, what is n divided by i? What is the remainder of n divided by i? Is zero. Is satisfied. So that's why you get this rule: composite of four, and all these three conditions are actually true. Are we together? Okay. Now uh, i could be also three, but what happens when i equals three? What is uh, four divided by three? What is the remainder of uh, four divided by three? One. One. So it's not equal to zero. So that does not create a proportional image. Okay. So any, when n equals four, we are done. When n equals 5, i could be 2, 3, 4, right? And we have to check whether n divided by i, whether n is divisible by i, right? So is 5 divisible by 2? No. 5 divisible by 3? No. 5 divisible by 4? No. no. So actually, when n equals 5, it doesn't produce any propositional image. So we got with this, OK? So among the many values, it, it looks like a uh, uh, four loops nested, right? So when n equals uh, 1 to 5, and i goes to 2 to n minus 1, and n divided by i equals 0. But you don't write the procedural way, right? You just need to write single uh, line, and you're done. OK? Now, what about the second rule, prime of n? When n equals 2 to 5, and not composite. So basically, when n equals 2, right? So when any so first check think about when n equals two. Is two a composite? No. According to this thing, four is the only composite, right? So this is not. But so here we get prime two, and this is true, but it's not uh, not composite two. Actually, let's not comp uh, compute this one yet. We just create a propositional image. Okay. What about n equals three? Yeah, and equals 4 and equals 5. You just copy these things. Okay? So when you do this, um, you will actually, uh, we'll actually uh, run this program later, but you will see that um, prime of 2, 3, and 5 are true, and composite of 4 is also true. So that, that, that will be the stable model. Okay? Okay. okay. So this is exercise problem. I, I think you can do by yourself. So this, actually, all the exercise problems that I did in class is actually coming from the uh, lecture note. So you can take a look at it. So. Okay. So this is exercise problem in the handout. Um, there's a choice rule, which I, okay, so one thing that I uh, told you before, remember P or not P, okay? So in Klingo, there's actually a specific uh, syntax for writing P or not P. So if you write uh, P of 1 here, then Klingo will understand this as P1 or not P1. How many stable models are here? Two. Okay. So it's based. The reason that this is called choice rule is is either choose P1 to be in the stable model or not. So it's kind of choosing these options. And you can also uh, use uh, the interval notation. And when you do this, Klingo will understand as conjunction over all these formulas, where uh, this term inside will be all the values possible. And can you guess how many stable models will be here? P1 or not P1, P2 or not P2, P3 or not P3, how many stable models will be there? Hmm? There are eight. 
you can no eight. <laughs> So all the uh, subsets of P1, P2, P3 can be a stable model. And he here is actually another exercise problem. Okay? All right, so uh, we did a lot of exercise today, but if you are not uh, comfortable, uh, maybe you can watch the video again, or you can ask uh, me in person, uh, or you can uh, uh, post on the Piazza. Okay? All right, so this is the end. So you have to be ready for the quiz now, okay? All right, thank you.